I hope you all must have enjoyed watching the videos which I had put in the channel earlier. So in one of the videos, we had studied about the cell, which was a topic of class 8th. Today also we are going to study about the same topic, but in a little detailed manner. This is a topic for class 9th, that is the fundamental unit of life. When I talk about the word fundamental, it means the basic. So today we are going to study about this basic unit of life, which is a cell. Now, as we had discussed earlier, we need to remember one thing that without cell, no organism can survive. So the cell is the basic unit of structure. It is the basic unit of function and all cells, they arise from pre-existing cells. These three sentences, they form the cell theory which was given by M.J. Schleden and Theodor Schoen in the year 1839. But who discovered the cell? We all know that Robert Hooke discovered it in the year 1665 after he studied the cork cells, which were the dead cells, under a very crude microscope. So the detailed study of the cell was done after many years when they had better microscopes. So this cell, what we know, is the basic building block of all living organisms. And we can compare the cell to the brick of a wall. Now these cells, which are same in the structure, which are same in the function, they are just put together, piled one on top of another as a group, and they form what is known as a tissue. Just like a brick in the case of a house, which are the same bricks, so they are the basic building blocks of a house. They are put together and they form what is known as a wall. So these cells which are grouped together and form a tissue can be compared to the wall of a house. Same way like the walls they make a room and the room makes a house. Same with the tissues they make an organ and the organs put together form the organ system and finally the organism. So this is the organization of the living organism. Now here we can clearly see the remarkable similarity in the bricks of a wall and the cells of the organism. So like they are stacked one over the other, so are the cells in case of the organism. So now we can relate these cells to the bricks of a wall. Now the cells, they are varying from animal to animal, from organism to organism. There are organisms which are having only one cell. They are the unicellular organism, whereas there are the other organisms, other living beings, which are having many, many cells. M for many, M for multi. So they are the multicellular organisms. They have millions of cells, which are coming together as groups and performing a specialized function. Now these are the unicellular organisms. First is the amoeba and second is the paramecium. Now in case of amoeba, we can see that these are the false feed which it uses to capture the food and for nutrition. So we can say that each and every cell, whether it is a cell of the unicellular organism or whether it is a cell of a multicellular organism, will perform all the life functions like respiration, reproduction, nutrition. So all the functions are performed by all the types of cells. Now is the shape of all the cells same? No. The shape depends upon where they are located, what kind of a function they are performing. For example, I had already discussed in the previous video that we have a simple cell like neuron. This neuron, the main function is to conduct the messages in form of the electric current or electric impulses as we may call it to the brain so that you can respond to a particular stimulus. So this is the function of a neuron or a nerve cell. This function will be performed whether the nerve cell is there in a mouse or whether it is an elephant. So it does not depend where it is or on the size of the animal. It is going to perform the same specialized function that is of conducting the messages to the brain. So we need to remember that the size of the animal will not affect the functioning of the cell. Now this diagram will clarify it further as far as the shape and the structure and the function of the cells is concerned. 
Now these are the RBCs which we see. These are round and circular because we all know that they are present in the blood and the main function is to take the blood to different parts of the body in the circulation of the blood. So this shape facilitates that function. As far as this shape of the neuron or the nerve cell is concerned, it is having the branches and it is elongated so that it can easily conduct the nerve impulses or the messages to the brain and bring the impulses or the messages back. So this branched form or the branch structure facilitates this kind of a specialized function. Now coming to the sizes of the cell. We have a very small size cell which is the PPLO. That's pleuro pneumonia like organism. And the size varies from anything between 0.1 to 0.5 micrometers. Which is very very small and we cannot see it without the help of the microscope. We cannot see it with the naked eye. Whereas in other organisms, we can see the plants, we can see the animals because they are multicellular. But a single cell, the largest single cell, smallest now we know is PPLO, which is the largest one we had studied and I hope you remember that it is the ostrich egg. And the size varies from 130 millimeter to 170 millimeter and we can easily see it with the help of our naked eyes. Now coming to the cell and what kind of the functions the organelles are performing, we need to remember one thing that the cells they vary slightly if they are present in the plants and if they are present in the case of the animals. In case of the plants, now we know that the plants they don't move, right? So there has to be something which is giving it the mechanical strength or the mechanical support. So what gives the strength and the support? That is a cell wall, which is the outermost layer in case of the plant cell. This cell wall is, however, missing in case of the animal cell because we all know that animals, they keep moving from place to place and they have got higher metabolism. So the cells, they have to be living completely without any cell wall. So another thing that is giving them the difference which we will study in detail in the subsequent videos which I will be posting is like green coloring pigments which are the chloroplasts in case of your plant cells. Now based on whether the nucleus which is the life of the cell whether it has the membrane or it does not have the membrane we can again group cells into the different types. The cells which are lacking the nuclear membrane are the primitive cells P for primitive and P for prokaryotic cells. Whereas on the other hand, there are certain cells which are having the nuclear membrane outside the nucleus. And these cells are advanced cells. They are known as the eukaryotic cells. So we need to remember this, that no cell can live without the nucleus. It is the life of the cell and is also carrying the genetic material or the chromosomes. The granular material in which many small, small organelles are lying inside the cell is the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm along with the nucleus forms what is known as the protoplasm. So we need to remember this and we will be studying about all these organelles in detail in our subsequent videos. So children, if you have liked this, do click the like button. And do subscribe to the channel and stay connected with me. Thank you children. Have a good day.